one thing that I really love about gardening is that you can grow plants that are useful, plants that you can use in the kitchen, plants that you can use in crafts, and plants that you can use in beauty and soap making. And I have tons of recipes on my website, lovelygreens.com, and a few tutorials, video tutorials here on my YouTube channel as well, how to make handmade soap. And today we are going to be making a very simple, eco-friendly soap. And this is one that you can customize to your heart's desire. So if you want to grow carrots this year and use carrot puree in it, this is the recipe. If you want to grow poppy seeds and then create a scrubby hand soap, you can add them to the soap recipe as well. It is a white bar, so we're using oils that are very light in color. It's very simple, there's only four oils used. And we're making an unscented soap today, but you can add essential oil to it if you wish as well. This is a cleansing yet conditioning, good all-purpose soap recipe. And that is the reason why I've included it as the main recipe in my new soap making ebook, which goes through the entire process of making soap. It's 68 pages and it has recipes at the end as well, including this one. And the idea with this recipe in the ebook is that I then show how you can add clay to it to naturally color it and you can add all kinds of things. Although making handmade soap is really fun, you do have to be precise. So you need to measure down to the gram. You also need to wear protective equipment. So just ordinary washing up gloves when you're handling the lye solution or the soap after you've added the lye. And you also need some eye protection as well. You won't need a whole lot of equipment to make the soap recipe, but you will need a heat source and your kitchen hob is fine. You will absolutely need a digital kitchen scale because soap recipes are not like food recipes. You have to measure each ingredient down to the exact unit. I like to use silicon spatulas for stirring and scraping and getting every last drop out of the pan. And a sieve is really useful in making sure that no bits of the lye or undissolved lye get into your soap. So you strain your lye solution through this. A digital infrared thermometer. This is really important too, because you do need to measure precisely. An immersion blender or stick blender. This is a, an important soap making tool for cold process and hot process soap making. And a mold. And there's lots of expensive and not so expensive silicon molds and wooden molds, but I find that for small batches, just an ordinary drinks container is perfect. And this is what I use in my soap making workshops. And many people have used these. I use them all the time and it makes use out of a waste piece of material. To start off, you're going to turn on your digital kitchen scale and you're going to measure out your ingredients. Into a stainless steel pan, measure out the shea butter and the coconut oil. Into another container, measure the olive oil and the castor oil. And then into heat proof jugs, the sodium hydroxide and the distilled water. Before we start making soap, you need to get your workspace set up. So have all the tools you need at hand. You should pre-measure all of your ingredients, get everything ready. Also make sure that you're working in an area that's bright, well ventilated, and that you're not distracted. So that you're not gonna have pets or children or anything disrupting you because you really need to focus and make sure that you do everything step by step and do it precisely. You also need to put on your goggles, make sure they fit comfortably, and wear gloves because th this first step is making the lye solution. Lye tends to come either in a granular or pellet form. Pellet form is actually a lot safer and you always pour it into this distilled water. And we're just going to, going to put it in, in, one, in one go 
and then immediately stir it, this pelleted form tends to really stick to the bottom and form a crust if you don't get in there and start stirring immediately. And I have the door open behind the camera. You can't quite see that, but this is a really well-ventilated room. There, there's a window here as well, but there's a lot of heat and steam that is gonna come off of this and you do not wanna breathe it in. Once you're sure that the lye is completely dissolved in the water, it's completely clear, pop it into a basin of water to cool down because there is a lot of heat on it. We need to bring it down to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And in fact, I'm going to set this aside over here in the window just to help it cool down a bit more and also to make sure that those fumes go out the window. It's important to have your workstation set out so that you're not hunting for anything at an important moment in the soap making process. So I have my heat source here, I have my tools at the ready, and I also have my mold at the ready too. So it's already ready to go. I'm not messing with cutting it at this point. I did that as one of the very first things as well. So stainless steel pan on the heat source and I'm just gonna turn it on to low. Stainless steel is really important for the material of uh, pan that you're using because lye, so the caustic soda, can react with some metals. So stainless steel is a really safe type of pan and common enough as well. The solid oils that I have in the pan, so the coconut oil and the shea butter, will melt a lot quicker than you'll think. And coconut oil is a great oil for soap making. You'll find it in most recipes. It creates big fluffy lather and a really hard bar. But if you use too much of it, it can be a little bit over drying. Shea butter, on the other hand, is a great alternative to using less eco-friendly oils like tallow or palm oil. So this is a vegan soap recipe and I've avoided using any oils that are too controversial. While these oils are melting, I'll continue to stir, but let's have a little chat about the liquid oils that we're using as well. I've pre-measured both the castor oil and the olive oil into this jug. And the castor oil is really thick and sticky. It's at the bottom. So when we do pour it into this pan in a, in a few, maybe even seconds, <laughs> it's melting quickly, we do need to stir this up so it doesn't stick to the bottom. The olive oil as well is a light colored olive oil. You can use extra virgin for this recipe, but your soap bars will not be as pure white. You'll, you might have a yellowish tinge to your bars afterwards. So this is olive oil, you can get it called light colored olive oil, you can get pumice olive oil, and I think that it's really eco-friendly to use pomace olive oil in that it's lower grade, it's perfect for soap making, it helps to trace a little bit quicker, but it's also oil that is second grade. It's not as nice for eating and it gives it a really good purpose. And I really hate waste. So olive oil pomace or pomace olive oil is a fantastic oil for using to make handmade soap. The oils are completely melted. So what I'm going to do now is take it off the heat and add the liquid oils. In it goes all in one stream and then use the spatula to scrape the inside of this jug out. We've measured to the gram and we want to make sure that every single drop of oil gets into the pan as much as we can get in. The oils will have cooled down slightly after adding the liquid oils, which are room temperature, but this is still gonna be quite hot. Let's just check the temperature. That is really hot. We need to cool it down to between 90 and 100 Fahrenheit. And while we're at it, let's check the lye solution. 107, so almost there. The lye solution is quite a bit cooler than the oils at this point. So I'm gonna take the lye solution out of the water 
and it can just cool without that extra element of helping it to cool quicker. And I've just brought over a bowl full of water. You can use your sink if you wish. And all I'm gonna do is hold this in the water and stir, and this will help to cool those oils down. We tend to soap small batches of handmade soap at between 90 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the recipe. If you want to make a really light colored bar though, something that's going to be pure white, you need to soap at a much lower temperature. Wonderful. Both the oils and the lye solution have cooled down. They're just under 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect. And so now comes the fun part. So we have the lye solution here and we have the sieve here. And what I'm going to do is put the spatula inside and we are going to pour the lye solution through the sieve and against the spatula here. And that will help to reduce any air bubbles getting into our soap. So just pour through as gently as you can. Pop that into the jug and set it aside. And then give this a good stir. Scrape it off. Put that in the jug as well. This is where the immersion blender comes in. And when you're using one of these for soap making, use it on the lowest power option that you have. So I'm using it at this top one. And put it in at an angle. Don't plop it in like that because there's air inside the head of the immersion stick blender and we don't want that air in our soap. And it also helps for these smaller batches to kind of tilt the pan slightly. So I'm going to pop it in at an angle. That's gonna let the air escape through the opposite hole. And then I'm going to burp it, which means just tapping it gently on the bottom of the pan. And you'll see some air bubbles come up at that point too. The technique that I teach to my students is to gently stir using the immersion blender like a spoon, but whenever it's turned on to hold it firmly against the bottom of the pan and this will help stop any splatters from coming up. So hold on to the handle of the pan, hold on to the stick blender and only when it's at standstill turn it on. and then gently stir. So you're going to pulse and stir until the soap thickens up to a very, like a warm custard or pudding type texture. I've been pulsing and stirring for, I would say less than two minutes and it's hit trace, which is when it's thickened to the right consistency that we know we can put it in the mold. And you know it's at trace because there is a trail of soap that's left on the surface. You'll need to work pretty quickly at this point. Take your stick blender head off and try to scrape what you can back into the pan. We don't like wasting any soap and it'll make cleanup a lot easier as well. And now we've got our recycled mold here at the ready. And we are just going to pour the soap batter in. Next, just take the mold and slightly jiggle it and tap it and that will help to settle the top so make it a lot more level. And hopefully if there's any air bubbles in, they'll pop to the top at this point too. The next step 
after this is waiting for two days before you do much of anything with it. And you can leave the soap to harden up, cool down on the kitchen counter or another surface, or you can put it in the refrigerator after it starts to firm up a bit and cool down. And the reason that we would wanna do that is to keep it nice and light colored. Warmth will actually change the color of soap. It can deepen colors that we put in, and it can also create a darker center in your bars. So if you wanna avoid that, put your soap in the refrigerator after it's hardened and then leave it in there overnight. Put some clean film over it so that no food gets in. And if you're using essential oils, that's also really important as well. This is soap that I've made in advance. You can tell it's hard, it's ready to be cut, it's not ready to be used though. But two days on, this is what you'll have and you can use an ordinary kitchen knife and an ordinary kitchen cutting board to cut your soap into bars however size that you wish. There's no rules when it comes to cutting your soap into bars. So again, even just eyeballing it, I've got eight bars of soap. And this particular recipe, you need to wait a couple of days at least before cutting the soap. And actually, if you can wait a week before taking it out of the mold, it will be even easier to cut and it'll be a lot more firm. To cure the soap, what you'll need to do next is find a place in your home that's out of direct sunlight, that's not too warm or too cold, and that gets plenty of air. And on a surface there, so it could be a bookshelf or it could be a counter someplace, put a layer of greaseproof paper, so it could be baking parchment, and then space your bars out on that paper so that they get plenty of airflow around them. And you just leave them there for a month. And then at the end of the month, you can use them and gift them and, and all of that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make all natural, eco-friendly, cold process soap. And you can find this recipe in my ebook, and that's the Lovely Greens Guide to Natural Soap Making. And if you have any questions or comments, do leave them down below. And a printable version of this recipe is on my website and I'll leave it down in the video description. Thanks for watching, happy soap making, and I'll see you next time here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now. One last thing before you go, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to Lovely Greens and click that little bell icon so that you get notifications for when new videos are out.